Honorable Patrick, this is Ali Nesse, and today I have the pleasure of being joined by Dr. Michael Wall, who is the lead author in a recently published article in the Triple O Journal called Dental Surgery in Anticoagulated Patients Stop the Interruption. Uh, Dr. Wall, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Can you please tell us a little bit about your article and your findings? Well, for years, I always thought that dentistry was a lot safer than what uh, the so-called experts have taught us. Uh, we've all been taught to have a physician consultation before we do an occlusal amalgam or composite on a patient. And along these same lines, uh, we have dental surgery in patients who are taking anticoagulating uh, drugs like Coumadin or Warfarin being the uh, generic name. And uh, what we were taught in dental school is that if a patient's going to have a procedure like a, a, an extraction or other type of dental surgery, while they're on these kinds of drugs like uh, Coumadin, then it's important to interrupt the Coumadin so we can do the uh, dental surgery so that they don't have a bleeding complication or, God forbid, bleed to death. That's what we were taught. So what I found is when we look through the literature, uh, there have been thousands and thousands of cases of patients having extensive dental surgery, even uh, full mouth uh, extractions with alveoplasty uh, while they're anticoagulated. And yet there have been a, just a minuscule number of bleeding complications that required more than local measures for hemostasis. Not a single patient in the literature has died from a bleeding complication. Now, I also searched for uh, patients who were um, having dental surgery, whose anticoagulation was interrupted for this surgery. And unfortunately, most of them were fine, but unfortunately, uh, some of them, uh, about 1%, uh, actually had embolic complications, meaning a stroke, basically. And uh, some of these patients actually died. But, but even if they didn't die, some of them might, may have wished they were dead, because uh, a stroke can be just absolutely devastating. So what we've been doing a lot, in a lot of cases is uh, interrupting uh, patients' anticoagulation for uh, a purpose that really doesn't make any sense. So the risk uh, from what you, you found is not high enough to warrant the, uh, the removal or pay, taking the patient off the anticoagulation therapy and the risk-benefit ratio was unfavorable. That's right. So basically what it comes down to is uh, when you're going to, to uh, to, to do one of these kinds of procedures on a patient who's anticoagulated, the choice comes down to something very simple. It's either bleed or die. And the bleeding, actually, the bleeding complication rate is roughly the same as bleeding complication rates in patients who are not anticoagulated. Hmm. So it's really not that uh, much of an issue. We're, we're all afraid of it, but we, we really possibly don't understand it enough because we don't have that many patients who are anticoagulated. So what does the international normalized ratio or the INR comes into the whole thing? And if you could just kind of give us a little brief, um, you know, for our viewers, a little uh, brief background about the INR and its indications for extractions. Sure. For, for many years, uh, since I think uh, possibly the 1950s when uh, warfarin was first used therapeutically, uh, it was difficult to have a consistent measure of its effect. And uh, there was something called the prothrombin time ratio which would vary from lab to lab. So you couldn't really get a good idea in one lab that was equivalent to another lab. So we now have something called the International Normalized Ratio, or INR. And this is a way to standardize uh, Coumadin's uh, therapeutic measure. So we have this INR. And for most uh, heart conditions, INR is, uh, a, a, has a therapeutic range of between 2.0 and 3.0. For some heart conditions like artificial heart valves, it's 2.5 to 3.5. What do we have to know as dentists? We should know that the therapeutic level of uh, anticoagulation is never above INR 3.5. If it is above INR 3.5, up to INR 4.0, it's probably still safe to uh, do uh, dental surgery. But what we have to know is 3.5 is usually the upper limit. Okay, so if you have a patient, for example, who's at about a uh, 3, 3.5, and from what you've found is that it's not uh, prudent to take them off the uh, anticoagulation therapy in order to do the extractions, uh, what kind of a post-op instructions and, uh, would you be explaining to the patient in terms of the time, uh, you know, some, uh, some aids, home remedies, if you will, to stop the, uh, uh, the bleeding if they have post-op bleeding, and at what point would they be going to the hospital? Well, first of all,